Raise your right hand to the heavenless now. The words of the following prayers may be very strange. But it is the situation we are in that has permitted it to be so. There is a lot of wild and strange wind blowing on so many lives. We want to deal with those winds now. Oh God alive! And let the wild and strange wind in my life scatter. Can I hear the sister shouting this loud and clear? Brothers shouting louder than the sisters. Everybody together. Make it louder than that, beloved. Masotakapo ribokase. In the name of Jesus, command the wild and strange wind to be scattered, to be scattered. Scatter the wild and strange wind in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this with a tone of finality. My angels of breakthrough. Take position. In all the earth. Can I hear you saying this with a tone of finality? Say it again. And recover my possession. In the name of Jesus. Let them take positions. They must take position. And recover your breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Say my father. Rebuild your sanctuary in my life. In the name of Jesus. Let your sanctuary in my life be rebuilt. Masikaya bo shentera bakaraba. Jesus name we pray Say my father Restore back the glory of my life In the name of Jesus Let the glory be restored Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Please pray this very well. There is physical decay, spiritual decay, financial decay, all kinds of decays. Decay! Disappear! No! In the name of Jesus, deal with decays. Yes. In Jesus name we pray. So whatever has troubled me in the past. Can you say that loud and clear? Be converted to blessing. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has troubled me in the past. Be converted to blessings. Be converted to blessings. Masikaya bo shentera bakala bo sen. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for another wonderful time. We praise your holy name because you are our rock, you are our strength. There is none like unto you. Glorious in holiness, you are fearful in praises, and you do wonders. We thank you for bringing us here. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you lay your hands upon us. Move our lives forward powerfully. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. This morning's message and the prayers is for those who do not want poverty to know their doorsteps. It's for those who want to have overflowing abundance. It's for those who are tired of scraping the bottom of the plate. It's for those who are tired of looking for pennies, looking for coins, looking for this, looking for that, and not finding it. It's for those who want to be big financially. And it's for those who want God to use them to be a big partner in his work. It's for those who believe that God has raised them up to help many people. And it's for those who are tired of being poor. I want you to listen very carefully. Because this is not the kind of message you hear quite often here. We're talking for a few minutes on what I call the mystery of seed offerings. The mystery of seed offerings. Let's read from the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. Sisters, what's the title of our message? Brothers, what's the title? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth. God gives increase. But men have to plant something. You must plant something. It is on that plantation God will give an increase. There are several people who come to the house of God. In fact, there are nine categories of people who come to the house of God. That is group number one of people. We call them pillars. A pillar is somebody who worships regularly. He gives freely both of his time and money. Pillars never leave a building. Pillars stay. Even when others, other things are removed. You can be a pillar in the house of God if you want to. That's the first group of people. Second group of people, you call them supporters. They give their time. They give their money. If they like the general overseer. Or if they like the pastor. They don't like them. That's it. Three. There is a group of people who call leaners. They lean. Those are the ones who use the church for funerals, for baptism, naming ceremony, marriages. But they don't give their time or their money or their talent to support the church. It is under this category we have the prayer collectors. Prayer collectors. They just want to pray and pray and pray and go. They don't want to be a part of anything. They don't want to contribute to anything. They're just there to receive their breakthrough and then run away. They couldn't be bothered. How do these people pay their NEPA bills? How do they pay their water bills? How do they, how do they run this place? How, 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 how do they? They are not concerned. I want my breakthrough. They are leaners. And when they want to give offering to God, they give to God as if they are giving to a beggar on the street. Some will fold it and fold it and fold it and fold it. Some will look for the dirtiest notes possible. They put it down. And yet you want God to give you uncommon breakthroughs. Or you give him the worst you can, you can give. Those of you who were here on Wednesday, you can remember we shared on the topic sacrifice. Sacrifice. Four. There are those who call 
special people. They give or help occasionally when the thing appeals to them. It doesn't appeal to them, they will just not bother. The fifth group, group of people will have coming. They are the annual people. Those people in the olden days we used to call ECN Christians. E, they come on Easter Day. C, they come on Christmas Day. Wow. N, they come on New Year's Day. They dress up and look serious, but they are only there on special occasions. And after that, that's it. Some husbands only follow their wife to church on the day they are going to dedicate their babies. After that day, you don't see them again. Six. We have a group of people who call the sponge. They take all the blessing that the church can give, but they give little or nothing to support the church. Sponge. Seven. We have the vagabond people. They're just going from church to church. Today is this place. Tomorrow is that place. No commitment to anywhere in particular. There are plenty of them. They just loaf around and migrate from church to church. The white man says the rolling stone gathers no dust. Eight. We have the gossipers. They talk freely about everyone and everything in the church. They have information about everything. Both the one they know and the one they don't know. What concerns them, what does not concern them. They talk about it all the day. While others are praying, they are talking. When the sermon is going on, they are talking. They are gossipers. Plenty of them in the house of God. Which is very, very sad. Very, very sad. Now, we have the referees. They take offense at everything and they are always criticizing everything and everybody. They criticize everything and everybody. They compare and contrast. They are professors in church comparisons. They are the ones who say, when I was in the apostolic Elijah, when I was in the, the church of Docas, when I was in the church of uh, Timothy, but they won't do anything practical to move the place forward. Let me first of all confirm with you that the people that God is ready to shower abundance on are the first group of people, the pillars. That's point number one for this morning. Point number two is that Christians are supposed to be the richest persons on the surface of the earth. But one area in which the enemy is cheating us and putting us to poverty is in making us stingy towards the things of God. That's why you find some Christians who are not as prayerful as some of us, who are not as serious as some of us, but they have a lot of money because they give. They know that once you sow, God waters. One area that the enemy has used with very accurate measure is failure in the area of our giving. But one, the Bible talks about tithe. It says, if you tithe, I will open the windows of heaven and you will even have no room to take it. If you don't tithe, the windows will close and then abundance will be difficult to find. When you eat your tithe, you are eating your seed. You don't give the heaven a material to walk upon. Ah, you say, but my salary is poor. That's when you should even give more. That's when you should give more. I pray that the Lord will help us. Every income that comes into your hand, whether it's gift, or salary or profit a tithe of it belongs to the almighty God if you take that one tenth that God is asking for and put it in your pocket what he will do is this because the principle of heaven is very simple if you go and take what God does not want you to take then he will take what you want from you so when you take his one tenth from him it's one tenth you took from him will now come and take the nine tenths that it remains. You lose it. That's one major reason why many modern day Christians are poor. And we're not talking about holiness, all those things. There are many people who claim to be holy, but they don't pay their tithes. They are sinners. Your life can easily be measured in the thermometer of God by the way you give to God. 
when you they say there is offering time and your hands are already shaking or you are busy looking for the low notes to give to god then you are blocking yourself from untold blessings a woman had a dream many years ago a plate was placed at the door of the church for people to put their offering in that revelation the plate had the power of changing a person's gift into its real value the first person came along was a gentleman he put a gold coin inside the offering I mean let the thing touch the plate it became brass then the woman was looking said what's this the Lord said that man is giving the money so that people can say something good about him a lady also came and put in a penny and very soon that one too became half of what she put there and the lady said why, 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 why is that one and I said that one is just giving because it's a tradition to give then a little girl came along it dropping something like our one naira and very quickly that one became one cobble I said I look at that little girl a small girl why is it that what she put does drop in value but oh, the Lord told her, I say, he says, because she's giving that money because her mother ordered her to do it. So three people had passed. It was as if those things were not acceptable to God. Then this poor woman now came and dropping this tiny penny. Instantly, it changed to gold. And the woman said, why? The Lord said, she had given everything. This is a serious matter. Your giving is measured by God from what you left behind, not what you put down. This is one area where the enemy is cheating us as believers. There are many, many people here who will not steal anything from anybody in their lives. There are many people here who would dare not put their hands into somebody's pocket in the bus and you say you are stealing their mobile phones. You cannot do it because you are above that. But then they are great thieves because they are stealing from God. They can't steal from human beings, they can't steal things like mobile phones, steal money from people's pocket, but they are stealing from the Almighty, which is a greater offense. One tenth of everything that comes into you, you give it. And don't come here and start asking questions. Excuse me, is it net or gross? Is it net or gross? What is net or gross? Whatever becomes available to you, tight it. Whatever is available to you, tight it. Why some people even give more than they tight? so that the Lord can bless them. I made up my mind many, many years ago that poverty would not be my lot. So if that is your decision, you must not fail in your tithe. Unfortunately, if you are failing in your tithe, the Bible says, by the time you are bringing it back, you have to add one-fifth on top of it again. And then if you don't bring it back, you are, you are not, let alone even you adding one-fifth, you are committing more offense and breaking the rules of God more and more, more and more, and poverty and devourers will move in. So some people miss their tithes all the time. And whether you like it or not, beloved, we do pay tithes. Some pay their tithes to Pharaoh. I learned my lesson a hard way many years back many many years back that one is not even that i am not giving the time but i just forgot it in the envelope where it was so i thought i'd put it down but it was still in the envelope when i would pay back it started like this i was driving a downfall bus at that time i went to the fuel station i said fill the tank a fellow filled the tank collected my money and i drove off all of a sudden after a few meters from the petrol station my vehicle stopped we pushed it. We dealt with the battery. It refused to start. Nobody bothered to go and look at petrol because I just bought petrol. Before we discovered that it was the petrol. And at the first station where I went, what he did was he sold breeze into my tank. We had knocked the engine. Then we discovered that the man didn't sell me fuel. Well, I had now to buy a new engine. And I got to my started praying, why? What's the problem? The Lord said, tight. Oh, and I remember he was still in the bag. So I paid. Many of us are paying our tithes to Pharaoh like that. Because we refuse to pay the correct one. People come and pray some serious prayers. I want breakthroughs. I want breakthroughs. When they now get the breakthrough, say, ah, a whole 10% of this guy. Say, ah, too much. Too much. 
Let me bring just some. You are a thief. And you are stealing from your maker. And it's a serious offense. This concerns everybody. It is the enemy that says, go and borrow your title. If you borrow it, you are borrowing trouble. This has to be made clear to you. So you will say that they, they should have explained these things to us. When people are supposed to be multi-millionaires, they are rolling in poverty and they are children of God. And the Bible says the earth is the Lord. Something is wrong. So we fail in that area. Second area in which we fail is in the area of first fruit offering. We make it at a point of duty in Mountain of Fire to pray on that every Sunday. The Bible makes it very, very clear to us what we should do with our first fruit offering. You should be very, very careful, beloved. Proverbs 3 9 tells us, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. The first fruit of all thine increase. Once something in your hand grows bigger, you give a first fruit. That's one area the enemy is cheating us. The third area is in the area of our regular offerings. Regular offerings that we collect here. The Bible has rules guiding the regular offerings. If you get home, read 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 9. There are rules guiding this regular offering we take. Number one rule that if you want to give your offering, which is different from the tithe, that tithe is not negotiable at all. If you want to give, the Bible says, number one, give unselfishly. A total surrender of ourselves to God. When you yourself, you have sacrificed yourself to God, everything that belongs to you belongs to the Almighty. When you are stingy, you become poorer and you pay the offering to Pharaoh. Number two, the Bible says give sacrificially. Number three, the Bible says give generously. Generously. Those are the laws guiding the offering. Number four, the Bible says give willingly. Don't wait for somebody to pressurize you, to put pressure on you, to say bring, bring, bring. No, no, no. Don't wait for somebody to take the microphone and I want 10 people to give me one, one million naira. Don't wait for that. Give to God willingly. Number five, give lovingly. Six, give proportionately according to your income. Seven, give cheerfully. Because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Number eight, give systematically. Give it systematically. I have a plan, a program that is to give at regularly as regularly as possible. Number nine, give at every opportunity that you are given, wherever you are, and they are serving God. Choose that opportunity. Give to God. The enemy is dealing with us in that area. But those are not our really major areas of concern this morning. Our area of concern is the number four one, which is the seed offerings. As I would say, the mystery of seed offerings. This is a key to super abundance that many Christians don't know. When God had a need on earth, he sent the seed of the woman to come to the earth. When God had a need, he sent forth Jesus as a seed. And when Jesus came, that need was met. What is a seed? A seed is a source, a beginning. A propagative structure, a fountain, a conception, a nucleus, an egg. That's what a seed is. When you sow your seed, it has a life in it. That life will give you the ability to break your ground and then give you results. Read your Bible well, beloved. God operates a principle of seed. Seed harvest. Seed harvest. Say, so, whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he also be. Your seed is genetically coded to give you what you want. Every seed has a life in it. And in that seed, as small as it is, there is a whole forest. So a seed is a powerful tool for somebody desiring mighty, uncommon breakthroughs. In fact, the word breakthrough is derived from sowing, the sowing concept. When a seed breaks forth through the ground, God sowed Jesus as a seed. 
But after three days, it broke forth. That's what why we have our salvation today. When, as a believer, do you sow a seed? Number one, you sow a seed when you want to start any major project in your life. That seed you sow will release your fourth man in the fire. That seed has life in it and it will yield to you. That seed is God's recovery strategy. That your seed will bruise the head of your serpent. So are you planning to start a big business? You want to start something, you want an explosion in it? Look for something substantial. Hold it in your hand and speak to it. And say, I show you as a seed. So that as I start this project, there will be an explosion. Test it and see. The second time you should sow a seed is when you are facing a challenge. When you are facing a challenge, you sow a seed. Sow it to the things of God. I know a woman, two weeks to her wedding, the husband-to-be came and said, Sorry, my mommy came here this morning. And she said, a prophet told her that you are a witch. And that if I marry you, Death is the answer. So, no marriage again. I said, I'm a witch. I said, I'm not a witch. I'm a child of God. So, well, that's what mommy said. That's what the prophet told her. So, before you go, before you go, I have my engagement ring back. Don't come here again. You understand? The sister left the place. But she understood the principle of seed. When somebody is facing a challenge, she now said, okay. She had three accounts in the bank. We went to the first account, withdrew everything. Went to the second one, withdrew everything. Went to the third one, withdrew everything. She brought it to the house and spoke. So I'm facing a challenge, oh God. Now I saw this as a seed that will go and speak on my behalf and scatter this challenge that I'm having. She put the thing on Wednesday. By Sunday when she arrived from the service, there is a congregation waiting for her from the husband's family to come and beg. You sow a seed when you are facing a challenge. When do you sow a seed? When you are facing defeat or losses. David sowed a seed in 1 Samuel 30. We don't have time to read it now. He sowed a seed into the life of a young man whom he saw dying at the war front. It was the young man that now took David to where he conquered his enemies. The seed that David planted brought him victory. I remember when I was in England. That time, we, we, I went on a scholarship. And they gave us 300 pounds a month. 300 pounds. People like me were rejoicing. were very happy. But it was more than enough for me. And I kept doing praise, worship, and thanking God every day for the 300 pounds. But one day, as I left the laboratory where I was working, where I was doing my research, I met a student an Arab from Kuwait and he was crying bitterly on the corridor. He said, oh no. These people want us to stay here. They're not looking after us. How can they expect us to survive on this small money? I said, ah, sorry. Uh, maybe I should have gone away that day instead of talking to him. He said, they'll give you small money. He said, yes. How did they expect us to survive like this? And he was crying. He said, say how much are they give you? He said, only 10,000 pounds. I said, what did he say? He said, only 10,000 pounds per month. In fact, I didn't know what to say. I was still rejoicing that I had 300 pounds. I was a man from another place complaining that 10,000 pounds was too small. I said, can I ever catch up this man? Can I catch him up at all? Then imagine my shock when I got home. And the Lord said, well, after you have taken your money for food, your money for house rent, the rest of your 300 pounds, go and sow it to the life of those students who are poor. I said, ha, I had to obey. And so when I came from England, people that were working in the same place with me, they were laughing at me. They said, people who don't know book, the way you know book, they came back, brought Mercedes Benz. They came back, they brought car. They came back, they brought this. You came here with nothing. I said, I, I, I sold my money into the need of other people. He said, he, he said, he didn't send you to go and look after them there. But to the glory of God. The seed that I sowed there is still yielding now. 
Glory be to the name of the Lord. I, I, if I want to share that testimony, that would be a long time. When do you so? Number four. When you are really serious about explosive breakthroughs, then you sow seeds. You sow seeds. You speak to the seed and drop it. If you know and practice this principle, it will transform your life. Whatever you sow, you reap. But being a Christian, you will now reap in a good measure, pressed down, falling over. When you sow your seed, you unlock a thousand harvests that you think were impossible. This is a very serious matter. And I want you to understand it. The geo of the Mountain of Fire Miracles Missy has a lot of books and God is helping with those books. Sometimes when these books are sold, all the money goes back to the work of God. As we put it back into the work, a multiplication effect follows. One day I was here and somebody brought, somebody sent to me a check. It sent, I don't know the person. A check of five million naira with a testimony said dear dr lukoya i don't know you i've never met you before but i bought a copy of prayer rain when things were down for me and i made a vow to god that if i use this book to pray and i get my breakthrough i will give the writer of this book so much say so now i got my breakthrough here is the money up to now i don't know who he is that's what happens when you sow. Seed offering is planting a seed with the expectation of the harvest. Seed offering is a seed planted in faith for specific results. Seed offering is anything you have received from God and you sow back into the things of God. You can sow your time. You can sow your money. Seed offering is the tool that God has given to you to create a future of uncommon breakthrough for yourself. Ah, you say I have many things in my shop that is not selling. Give a sacrificial seed offering that touches you. Then see what happens. There was a woman. There were contributory things in their church. She was very poor. She didn't have anything to put down. Then one day, came to church and dropped Almost the biggest offering. And the pastor was surprised. The pastor called her. I said, woman, where did you get this kind of money? I said, pastor, when I saw that I couldn't give anything, I went and sold myself as a slave. It's the money that I've contributed. She sold herself as a sacrificial offering. And within a few years, that woman became super rich. Your seed offering is something that was given to you by God that you should sow into the things of God to hold a key to your future. Your seed offering is when you let God, you let go what is in your hand to God, and then God will let go what is in his own hand. Seed offering. That's a seed offering. I want you to understand this very well. When that small boy released the loaves and the fishes in his hands, what happened was a multiplication. Your seed offering contains an invisible instruction. Each seed contains a specific assignment that is created inside that seed to favor you. Elijah spoke to that woman. He said, bring me a little bread in your hand and a crucifix. man said, ah, my lord. That's all that is left to. I, I was hoping that I will eat this and my son and will die. So, however, I will bring it. What that woman did was to sow a seed. And immediately she sowed that seed. The multiplication effect followed. Man of God said, The meal of oil shall not dry until the Lord sends rain upon the land. So, every seed has an instruction to carry out for you. This is the mystery we miss out on. There are many who have never given any seed offerings in their lives. And they're wondering what's happened to this business. Why is it not growing? Why are students not coming to this school? Why are these things not selling? Many people who are running businesses, 
things like that, they rarely even pay their tithe, let alone see the offerings. And so the business does not grow. When you increase the size of your seed, you also increase the size of your harvest. That your seed is always your door out of trouble. When you sow an uncommon seed, it will create an uncommon harvest for you. And when a man or woman sows in the time of uncommon hardship, then he's writing a letter to abundance. I'm telling you this because it is not the program of God for you to be poor. It's not the plan of God for your life to be scraping the bottom of the pot. God has an agenda for his people. And we must pursue his agenda. In the book of Agai, before we pray now, chapter 1. Agai is in the Old Testament. We find Agar between Sephaniah and Zechariah. Agar, chapter 1. Let's read from verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe ye, but I smell warm. He that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, said the Lord. How can you take your chair in the house of God? You put it on sand. And you have enough money in your hand. To flood the place, to deck the place, and you decide to just sit on the sand there. You write a letter to what the enemy will use to fight you later. The principle of the Bible is that let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. If you are waiting for somebody to announce, you come and do this, come and do that, then you are debarring yourself from multiple blessings. But he who gives to the things of God without invitation, without anybody pressurizing you, what you do is that you write letters to uncommon breakthroughs. Begin this thing as from today. Begin as from this week. Plant special seed offerings. Make it sacrificial. Speak to that seed. Tell the seed to work for you. Speak to the seed and it should bring forth abundance onto your life. Sow it into the things of God. Then see what happens. Why is it I shared something here? At a white man missionary, a white man a missionary my friend was telling us. He went to minister in India. And there was this woman who was going to her idol in the river. This white missionary tried to persuade the woman not to go and worship, to the, to worship the rivers. The woman did not listen. The woman had a very sick child and a very healthy one. Two boys. And, but she added to the place of the idol worship with the two children. She wanted to go and donate one of them to the idol. The white man tried to persuade her. No luck. The woman went ahead. Well, the white missionary said, well, at least uh, if she had two children, one of them is sick, is about to die, the other one is healthy, he should just show the one that wants to die to the idol and come back. He had thought that that is what will happen. But when the woman was coming back, the white man said she, he was shocked to find that the woman was coming back with a sick child. When he asked her, why is your healthy child? She said, I've sacrificed him to the idol. So, said, but why didn't you put in the sick one? She said, I will not give my idol a sick sacrifice. Those are worshippers of the devil. How much more are those who are worshipping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Rise up on your feet. Many of us are guilty. Close your eyes. If you are here this morning, and you know you are a tight failure, you either don't pay or you borrow it or you have never even paid before. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Because the Bible says, if you pay, I open the windows of heaven. If you don't pay, the windows will be closed. Perhaps this is why the windows of heaven are closed against you. Ask him to forgive you. That there will be a dramatic change. You need to go and refund that which you have stolen from God. And those of you are coming to the house of God and you can afford to do certain things, you are not doing them. I just going, going in and out, going and out, going and out, and allowing just a small percentage of people to enjoy all the blessings. Just a small number of people enjoying all the blessings. 
Why don't you decide this day that you will repent and be part of the blessings? I give you time to talk to the Lord. Make up your mind what you will do. Don't just come here and treat the place as if you are not a child to the Almighty. Amen. Now, make a covenant with the Lord. What you will do. Make a covenant with him. The Bible says there is he that scattered it and he lives in abundance. There is seed that is stingy and then is in poverty. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer and pray it from your heart. Say, every Judas A sign against my prosperity. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray so anything in my life can you say that loud and clear that is stealing my uncommon breakthroughs clear away in the name of Jesus Jesus name we pray so by the power in the blood of Jesus oh God arise away from me where there is no way in the name of Jesus by the power in the blood of Jesus Oh God, make a way for me where there is no way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Let us share the grace in fellowship.